Good afternoon, and a blessed Sunday to each and every one of you, and thank you for joining me today at Tony Romaco Ministries. God shows us and shows you his love in many ways. All you need to do is to look, to listen, to hear, to see, and to truly feel it. He always has and always will love you. Accept it, expect it, and embrace it. The Lord hath Apollo appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. This comes from King James Version, Jeremiah 31, 3. And what is God saying? That he knew you before he created you. Therefore, he loved you. And in loving you, he drawn you, created you, architecturally engineered you to be unique in your mother's womb. And he's telling you he's loved you from that time forward. And as you're his child, he drawing you close to him. So he can embrace you and you can embrace him in that love. In today's sermon, I'm going to go over three verses from King James Version. And I'm going to put them in chronological order so you'll be able to see at the end of the sermon why I did such. Now, today's sermon is, Who is the Church? And I'd like you to share this message as well as our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus would like you to share this message as well so others may hear it. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Colossians 1.18 Jesus is the head of the church, like the head is of the body. He controls everything, he keeps everything in order and organized. He gives the orders on how it's run, and because of him, the church is held together. Jesus is the glue to the church. He puts everything in order. We, as his children, his flock, we are the body of the church. Jesus is the firstborn of the dead. God raised him from the dead. Jesus is sinless without sin. Therefore, he's the only one who is qualified to be raised from the dead and be the first one to do so. Therefore, making him, and he is, our king and our savior. And God also raised Jesus as part of his plan so Jesus can have preminiscence. Now, preminiscence over all of us. Now, let's go over the definition of the key word in this phrase, which is preminiscence. According to the King James Dictionary, it is being and having superiority and excellence distinction in something commendable as preeminence in honor or virtue, preeminence in eloquence, in legal attainment or in medical skill, which our Lord and Savior has all of these because he knows everything. Now being the only begotten Son of God, being the Word, which Jesus is the Word, and the Word was with God from the beginning. Jesus being God's first creation, his only begotten Son, therefore creating everything through him, for him. And it makes him, as I just said before, the only one who's qualified, truly qualified to be the head of his church, which is his father's church. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves, as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. This comes from Hebrews 10.25. Now, what is it saying? It's saying that Jesus would like to see more of us, his flock, his father's children, get together to worship God, his Father, and our Heavenly Father. Now, in the world we're living today, which is broken, Many have forsaken the church. Yes, many go to church every Sunday, do the church thing and the Bible study thing. 
but many have forsaken it. Really forsaking it in the sense is that they're not working on their relationship with God through Christ Jesus. And this isn't good. And you know why? Because Satan hates prayer. He wants to separate everybody, divide everybody. And he, when you go to pray, he hates that. He wants to get you away from praying because he wants to get you away from God. And that's one of the tools against Satan is the Word of God. And the closer we get to God, we get closer with Jesus. And we need to build each other up, encourage each other, in person and in prayer. So when we go to church, we need to really focus on our relationship with God through Christ and help each other since we're all connected as brothers and sisters in Christ. Therefore, knowing that the day is coming, which none of us know exactly when, the time or the hour. But the day is coming where Jesus wants to see us all together because he wants to see us saved. He came and lived amongst us and died for us so that we might be saved and we can live again with him and the Father in heaven. Moving on, let's take a look at Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, saying with grace in your hearts to the Lord. This comes from Colossians 3.16. Allow the gospel of Jesus, his words, his commands, his message from his Father to live in you. Meditate on it. Read it. Day and night. Live and act upon those commands. Guide each other using good sense. Having a good motive. Remember, God checks the motives. We may do something good and it may appear on the outside to the world that yes, it's a good thing that we did and we say good things. But what's our motive? What's our agenda? You see, God looks at that. For, see, for asking Jesus to die for us, we must thank God and praise Him for that. For all His love, His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness, for all the blessings and miracles He continually stows on you and me and each of us. This is how we praise God in everything putting nothing above our Heavenly Father. Because as Jesus said, He is above all. Nothing is above Him. So now, we know who the church is. The church is Jesus. And each of us, with our Savior, being the head of the church, being the high priest, each of us being the body of the church. Jesus being the glue of the church, keeping us together. And we're helping him do that by bringing those who are lost and in the darkness back to him. However, the church, you see, now listen, is even more than that. The church, because we are broken, we are hurt, is like a hospital. We're lost in some way, each of us. We're searching for something. Okay? The church is an essence. It's Jesus being the chief surgeon. The only surgeon to put us back together, to mend our broken heart, to give us a new heart, to heal us, to make us whole again. The church is also a sanctuary. It's God's house of prayer. A place to be with our Heavenly Father, to speak with Him, to hear Him speak to us in whatever way He feels we, He can get across the message to us. And we do all this through Jesus and because of Jesus, because He is the bridge and He closed the gap. And we go through the Father, through Him. The church is a place where each of us, the Lord's sheep, his flock, his children, come together to help each other, to 
to listen to each other, to build each other up, to encourage us to keep moving forward, no matter what situation we face, to stand by each other, to get each other back on the narrow path, the righteous path, to be the light for each other, to shine that light, which is Jesus, shining through us upon those which are in the darkness. To show each other how Jesus is in the process of transforming our lives and show those who are lost what he could do for them once they accept him as their Lord and Savior. The church is a place for spiritual growth. See, being a hospital, being a clinic, being a house of prayer, becoming one with God through our Lord and Savior, building upon our relationship with Jesus and thanking Him for being our Savior, thanking Him for being the atonement for our sins. The church is not just one thing, it's many things. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I'm Reverend Tony. Thank you for joining me today as I went live with another sermon. And I ask again, please, as I share this message with you, please share it with others so they too can hear the message. And on a side note, being the message is for you, you need to listen to whoever pastor or clergy that you'll be able to hear the message from. And if you don't hear it from one pastor or clergy, you need to pray and to ask our Lord and Savior to guide you to another one where you'll be able to hear that message. Because it's not about the clergy. It's not about social gatherings. It's about our Lord and Savior. It's about God. That's who this is all about. And they want you, our Father and our Lord and Savior, to hear the message. And Jesus wants to bring you into the kingdom, his kingdom, to live with him and to walk the streets of gold. And to hear the message on how he truly loves you and how his Father loves you and how his Father wants to bestow and give you blessings. So, don't just stick with somebody who you feel is charismatic or not charismatic or is fire and brimstone or not. Pray about it. To be guided to the best church, to the best minister, that you'll be able to hear the message that the Lord has for you. Please continue to walk in the presence of God. You'll be glad you did. Thank you for your support, your love and kindness as this week marks our seventh anniversary in ministry. May God bless and protect you all. May the second half of your weekend be safe, filled with joy and blessings. Start the week off calm, safe, spread the love, spread the peace, spread the forgiveness. And remember, it's better to understand than to be understood. We'll see you again next time as I go live with another sermon.